Hello, Paul Hamilton here for iPad Monthly. Super excited to bring you this lesson, looking at a world builder called Eden and looking at how we can use it for students to consolidate uh, area, perimeter, volume, and start to look at basically uh, those sort of areas. So I'm going to hit the plus at the top, select my world, select flat because I really don't want the distractions of trees and um, uh, mountains and, and uh lakes and different things. So I've got a really flat surface and now it's basically um, giving kids some options in regard to what to create. So if I said, um, kids, I want you to create a swimming pool that is um, that has an area of 12 um, and each block or each hole that we dig is kind of a meter by meter, um, we start to allow kids to actually create. So I might create something that uh, a swimming pool, like a long lap pool that's 12 um, meter squared, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I might fill it with some water, see how it looks. Just move back. You can see my lap pool starting to fill up. Um, and so there you've got um, a lap pool, if you like, that's filled up with um, with 12 that has an area of 12. And then you might say to your students, well, how else might we do it? And we might say, okay, we can create one that's um, three by two, and then another three by two. And all of a sudden we start to look at some different ways of representing um, an area of 12. Um, and so we can look down on it. I'll just fill up those gaps there. And then you can start to build on. So we've got two very, very kind of different swimming pools there. Then you could start to say, okay, I want a gazebo that has um, an area of 16, um, four by four uh, kind of an area. And then you can start to look at depth of things. And we can start to look at, well, hang on. Well, what if I actually made a swimming pool that was kind of two blocks deep? How would that affect the volume and, and the water that's being used? And what we can then do after we've started to explore these, I'll just turn around so I've got a better view of that. I might take a screenshot of that and actually start to bring it into an app like Book Creator or Explain Everything and start to explore some of the calculations that we actually saw. So uh, let me just start a, a blank one and explain everything. I'll bring in that screenshot. Uh, here it is here. Um, I won't do, oh yeah, I will do some cropping. So I'll just quickly crop. Um, just bring that up a little bit, press done, bring that in. So now I've got kind of my dimensions and I can actually start to look at doing some calculations. So what I might do is hit my eye and I might actually, um, let's lock that. So I'm just going to lock it as it is. So now when I, I can't move it and that allows me to do some things like actually draw over the top. So I might say, okay, this area across here is actually three meters. This area across here is two meters. Therefore, um, we've got two threes are six meters squared. Um, and then we can start to do some calculations there. And all of a sudden we're really bringing in kind of that virtual um, um, construction of things that are a little bit more true to life than doing it on paper. And we actually get the kids to build and work out some calculations on the side. So I think this is just a fantastic way of looking at how we can use world builders effectively in the classroom. And I think when we're doing things like digging and measuring, um, it really does make it an authentic fit between the two. So Paul Hamilton here for iPad Monthly, signing off.